Hey everybody, this is Donnell Tucker, Interactive Media Associate at g 4 tvcom I'm here with Chris Monfet. Monfet. Senior Previews Editor. Uh, had a blast playing a little Call of Duty last night. Yeah, we did. It had uh, live music, uh, hot women, and uh, I think there was a game, Call of Duty. Yeah, I wasn't even paying attention to that. Yeah, I was I, paying attention to the pencil skirts and nerd glasses, but... Uh, I was looking at the lights. When I wasn't doing that, I was blasting fools in uh, Deathmatch, Team Deathmatch, and a couple cool uh, new wager matches, uh, which we'll talk about uh, later on. But first, we're going to sort of dig into some of the perk skills, emblems, attachments, etc. Yes, yeah, so let's dive in. So right here, we see that we have uh, the first set of perks one. Uh, they're pretty traditional we, from the... Old gun, yeah, old games. there's not much here in the perks that's that's new, which is actually kind of good when you consider the fact that there's so much else going on in the game with the wager matches, the new Call of Duty points, the way that you can spend your experience, the attachments, the kill streaks, that you don't have to focus on sort of learning a whole new set of skills. Uh, there's tons more new stuff that you can dig your teeth into later on. So you'll see here, he's just kind of scrolling through a lot of sort of familiars. There's uh, some of the some of the sort of old favorites have been renamed, but for the most part, everything you you've known and played in other Call of Duty games are here. Uh, so you'll see here uh, when you go back to Lethal, you got your frag and your Semtex. Those are pretty uh, pretty everyday uh, equipment. Uh, but we've also got Tomahawk, which is, which is sort of totally new. It's sort of like a next gen version of the knife. It's throwable, mm -hmm. super fast to use, and it can take a dude out in one hit if you get him in the right spots. And to use it, I believe you use the right bumper. Yep. We All used offensive it. weapons are mapped to the right bumper, and strategic weapons are now mapped to the left bumper. Okay, and uh, pretty much uh, the only time I used it was in Sticks and Stones in the wager match. Yeah, there's a there's a great new wager match called Sticks and Stones, which sort of equips you with two weapons and a tomahawk. Uh, when you kill with the weapons, you get points. When you kill someone with a tomahawk, you basically bankrupt all their wealth. So it's uh, really good for uh, for strategizing your way through those levels. So you'll see here Wily P, Nova Gash, Flashbang, Concussion. All those are pretty standard until you get to Decoy. Uh, decoy is, uh, is I think it's going to really open up some strategy here. Essentially, you can throw out a decoy, and it's going to sort of fake your opponents into thinking that there's gunplay going on somewhere in the map. So if you sort of want to redirect where these guys are going, sort of, sort of turn them around, have them come to you so that you can do an ambush, you just sort of lob your decoy over. If they're not going to want to run in a gunfire, they'll turn around, hopefully right into your muzzle. That's, uh, that's something I probably want to try out a couple of times to See if they actually go with the bait. Yeah, it, people it, just run. It'll really, it'll really sort of test how reactive people are to running into to, to firefights because some people are just super aggressive and they're going to run towards those red dots rather than away from them. Uh, and it's going to, it'll really sort of test your ability to be strategic about when and where you use them. Now here's something new. It's called the camera spike. Ah, yes. It's sort of super useful. I used this a bunch yesterday. You plant it down, and it basically takes over your mini-map uh, with a sort of picture-in-picture -picture window of wherever you planted your camera. So if you want to know uh, if people are running through a certain alleyway, coming around a corner, if you're hiding somewhere and you just want to cover your back, you can plant a camera right behind you. Uh, it's, it's a really, really kind of good way, especially if you're a sniper and you're in a position that you can get sort of snuck up on or sneaked up on. Uh, you can put that camera down and sort of cover your ass. Yeah. Uh, I was also using it for uh, home videos because <laughs> uh, I don't know for some reason I was just like, "Hey, there's me. Uh, let me say right, something a to the Call camera." Call of Duty night vision action going exactly. on exactly. Yeah. Uh, and the C4, the tactical insertion, those are things that you'll have remembered from other games. Uh, what we got here though is the motion sensor, which kind of acts like a little mini UAV. So you can toss that out, and it'll give you a small radius just to sort of see if there are people coming. Super useful if you're hiding, say, behind a corner. Uh, beneath a windowsill and you want to know if someone's sort of on their way so that you can just ride up and blast them, throw that out, the red dot appears, you know you got a kill in your sights. So now we're on the kill streaks. There's some really, really cool new kill streaks here, this one being the RCXD. Uh, if you were ever in remote control cars, uh, and, and believe me, I was, uh, these are remote, remote control cars with C4 on them. Nice little add-on to that. Right, which I did not have that when I was a kid. I did not have that either with a kid. They didn't uh, sell that in stores. They would not let me have that, but uh, now in Black Ops, uh, you can guide this in sort of a first-person perspective. Uh, it's actually super easy to use. You'd think it would kind of just be running all over the place, uh, 
uh, but you can you can break, reverse, go back, go forward, uh, and you can choose to detonate it whenever you want. So it's not like if you accidentally run into a wall, it's going to explode. Uh, but if you see one of those coming your way, if you've got a machine gun, just start spraying bullets. Hopefully, you can you can detonate it before it hits you. So you're suggesting not people to run because that thing will catch. Yeah, up that to you. thing that thing's really fast and it goes upstairs. It's really easy to navigate with. So if that thing, so it's is, like shoot, and if you miss, yeah, if it's after you, you're dead unless you can blow it up. Uh, Counter spy plane. That's basically a revamped version of the UAV. That's nothing new. This, however, the Samtor. Samtor, which I like really much because uh, it destroys practically not every aircraft yeah. in there. I think uh, Blackbird can't be destroyed. Yeah, there are some things that you can't blow up, but care packages, chopper gunners, mm-hmm. um, that's going to really help out. It's uh, you know, it's basically for people who didn't want to run around with their rocket launcher and try to take down choppers. You can sort of plant that in a, hopefully like a high position that has good angles on the sky, and hopefully it'll take out some of the things that are blowing you and your friends away. Now you'll see care package, napalm strike, sentry gun, mortar team. Those are all things you're pretty familiar with until we get down to Valkyrie rockets. Uh, these are remote controlled rockets, a little bit kind of like the RCXD. Uh, these are a little bit more sensitive though. They're going to do a lot more damage if you can hit your enemies or you can throw them into a group of people. But they're fast. You can't put the brakes on them. And if you hit something, those things are going to blow up. Now, are they difficult to maneuver? Are they easy like the RC? They're, no, they're, they're more difficult to maneuver because they're constantly moving forward. So you can't hit the brakes. You can't redirect. And if you, say, accidentally hit a wall, there's no turning around. That thing is going to explode. So this is one thing. Open spaces are, are really key. And But, but if you're really a, good. Right. You've got a bigger blast radius, though. So if you kind of miss by a couple of feet, it's not going to matter because the guy's going to be vaporized anyway. And with seven kills and 4,000 CP, you know, it's uh, it's going to take a little while to, to build up to it. But, you know, hopefully you'll, you'll be able to practice a little bit and, uh, and really kick some ass. Now, this is a Blackbird. Yep. Which, uh, uh, like I said before, cannot be shot down. Yeah, thank um, God. But uh, pretty much it shows the, not only does it show the enemy positions, but also the direction uh, of where they're headed. Yeah, and I think that's a first for the Call of Duty series. Um, This is something that I'm really excited about, if only because every time you kind of see a red dot, you're not sure whether that guy's coming towards you, whether he's coming away from you. Um, If you can sort of process all that information really quickly, it can really help you change up your strategy. Obviously, fans will remember these dogs from Triarch's last outing with Call of Duty, World of War. Uh, there's a huge, fun addition to that game, just gunning down canines in the jungle. Uh, it looks like you'll be able to do it again this time, uh, only that you get to call on the pack uh, to kill your opponents. Um, I got no problems blowing away uh, a rabid attack dog. Well, it, uh, even if it makes the sound, like it, a whimpering sound, even if it do makes you a little feel anything sound. when you shoot if that? If it was like attack puppies or attack corgis, I probably couldn't shoot them because those are too adorable. Uh, but they probably wouldn't do much damage anyway. Yeah, they're pretty much held dogs. Yeah. So <laughs> they're all black and vicious. I got to take it down. Absolutely. This time the chopper is completely pilotable. You'll be able to jump in, fly around, machine gun dudes on the ground. Uh, if you've seen any of the single player demo, you'll have a sense of what it's like to jump in the chopper, at least in the single player mode, and blow up some bridges, stuff like that. Unfortunately, uh, the buildings in multiplayer are not destructible, so your missiles will just be tearing up people and not places. But it'll still be a lot of fun to get in there and blow some stuff up. And here we're just kind of going through the custom loadouts. This is you know pretty standard, pretty standard stuff for Call of Duty. And here we come to something that's really not standard. This is a totally new feature um, yes. that if you were you know if you were one of those players who just sort of found yourself really bored, kind of yawning with the the same old emblems over and over again, uh, you can create your own here. Mm, yeah, and not all of them are. Uh, are already there at your disposal yeah, you can to purchase, create. You can purchase most of these with your, your COD points, but some of them are unlockable. So as you, as you go throughout the game, you sort of get achievements or sort of mini challenges. You're going to unlock these. As you go come up in levels, you're going to unlock more. And eventually you can, you can unlock over 300, about 304 that are yeah. on this menu. And you'll see they're pretty simple. They're numbers, uh, you know, quick sim, lightning bolts, people, figures. Uh, you see swords, crests, shields. Uh, all of these uh, you can manipulate, you can edit, you can change the color. We're going to see that in just a bit. So we pick a little, uh, I guess you can say, uh, a, kind of, a person? Uh, yeah, kind of Mad Men meets Reservoir Dogs uh, that we're about to manipulate here. Uh, first, we're cycling through, trying to find a, a suitable weapon, maybe a soft drink, probably not. So let's go for the sword. Yeah, it's the sword. Uh, that's a good little... 
attachment. And to you'll it. notice that he bought that with some of his uh, COD points that he earned playing some of the wager matches. Uh, all obvious jokes aside about the positioning of the sword here, uh, you can see that you know he can position it in in the guy's hand. Uh, you can select up to twelve layers here. That's that's so a you, lot. That's a lot to create. Imagine what you could do. Um, and you don't see it here, but you can zoom in, you can zoom out. You know, so if you wanted to sort of just have the the head and the hand here, you could pull that guy to the bottom of the frame and zoom him in. Uh, you can change the backgrounds, change the colors. The color. uh, you'll see here that he can even just kind of go to an outline mode of this guy uh, with no detail. Mm. Um, so there's tons and tons of customizable stuff. Uh, and you'll see it appears in your little player card at the bottom. Uh, and most importantly, uh, it actually is something you can put on your guns and your weapons. Correct. That's only uh, available when you level up yep. at a certain level that you'll have that option to tag it on your weapon. Absolutely. And you might not see it uh, as you're playing through the game because obviously, you, you know, by the time you see your opponent's gun, you're not going to see the emblem. You're going to see Yeah, you're not going to stop by and be like, hey, you know yeah. what? That's a nice little picture you got As there. the bullets hit your face. <laughs> uh, but it, it's going to be something really cool for people who want to kind of be directors in theater mode who can get close-ups on the on the weapons and the guns. Um, and you'll just kind of know that, that you have it all the time, that, that that weapon is your weapon. Well, there you have it. A few little, little things for you to know. We're also going to be checking out some of the other maps and wager modes, so check those videos out at g4tv.com.